I hope that you did some uh, exercises because um, exercises can help, uh, can rebuild self conjure resources, that uh, intentional resources that are needed for um, studying. Uh, in this uh, last part, I'm going to focus on process of decision making. Uh, of course, in this case, um, in the context of consumer behavior. To understand process of uh, decision making, um, we need to take into account uh, specific criteria that, then, uh, that can guide decision making. One of the solutions or theory that describe decision process uh, is as following. Brim, uh, he suggested that a whole process can be distinguished uh, from other specific intellectual processes because it involves multiple elements, thus is pretty complex. So first of all, it starts with identification uh, of the problem. So uh, if we consider making a decision, first of all, we need to uh, think, do I have a choice here, right? Do I have at least two options to choose from? Because if there is only one option, it's not a decision. So it starts with identification of a problem. Then, that's the second element that leads to obtaining necessary information. So for instance, uh, uh, from a uh, theory of rational decision making, we may say that a consumer can think, okay, how much money I do have? How much time I do have for making a decision? What happens if I uh, choose this or other product? Of course, it's not always like that, that uh, we can consider all those elements, but at least from a perspective of rational um, decision making, this is what we can uh, uh, think about. Then, if all information that is necessary is collected, then we can uh, produce some possible solutions. Okay, given this information, what exact alternatives I do have? What's my choice set? Then, after a choice set is formed, a person can evaluate of solutions. Which alternative I like the best? Which one, or maybe which ones, I, um, are the worst? Which should be rejected? So, it's important process, because at this point, a consumer may start to implement preferences, which are very important to understand consumer decision-making. Then, that's the fifth element, a person can select a strategy for performance. So, uh, it's related to uh, making a, a decision. Then, phase six involves implementation of specific decision. So, if I decided to choose, let's say, uh, black shoes uh, for coming fall, uh, then I implement this decision. So, I, for example, uh, go to a cash machine, I take out some money, uh, and then I pay with the money for the shoes. Typically, a formal decision-making theory focuses on four elements. Evaluation of uh, different solutions and selection of strategies that are related to choosing different options. So, strategy for performance. In order to uh, implement evaluation of uh, solutions or in order to select a specific strategy, we need to know our preferences, so how we value alternatives, and also we need to have some uh, even very simple, simplistic decision rules. In the textbook, you can also find a more complex model by uh, Blackwell and colleagues that was published in 2005. As you see, uh, this model takes into account more elements. It takes into account that uh, what predeceases uh, information collection are two elements. So, uh, antecedents of 
drive, desires, and maybe situation factors. So to some extent, this model focuses on external factors, not on those factors within a person, but rather outside this person. So it also proposes that um, later on, before information is sought, a uh, specific need needs to be recognized. And also it proposes, it's more psychological, that uh, when a person seeks for information, um, he or she seeks uh, within memory or maybe uh, search says, for um, external sources. Then they also suggest here that before a, a purchase is made, of course, there's also evaluation of alternatives. And they propose that this specific phase of evaluation um, has two parts, pre-purchase and a final choice that is made. After a product is purchased, they propose that there is also another phase of the decision-making process uh, related to consumer behavior is consumption of the product and post-consumption evaluation. Because uh, when we investigate consumer behavior, we should not only take into account uh, yeah, that there was implementation phase, but also uh, for consumers nowadays, it's really important what will happen to the waste of the consumption. So, for instance, we bought a plastic product, we decided to buy a product in plastic. So then, to some extent, packaging can influence our decision making. Okay, let's move on. As I mentioned, preferences are really important for understanding consumer decision making process. What are preferences? You can say that in non-technical terms, uh, you can compare preferences to tastes. So uh, you may say that uh, I like uh, dance music, I, rock, I like rock music, I, cl I like classical music, and so on. So if you would say that I like dance music, probably it would mean that you like it uh, uh, more than a classical music. From a technical perspective, preferences are responsible for ordering a choice set. So let's consider a choice set S uh, that consists of uh, A, B, C, three options. And then we can also use a symbol, this arrow, in order to describe uh, relationships between them. We can say that if I prefer A over B, then I would uh, type A R O B, which means that A is preferred to B. We can also use different symbols in economics uh, that, or papers in economics that uh, is uh, pretty common to use those symbols. So uh, in this case, in the first symbol, A R O B, means that A is uh, strictly preferred to B or, in other words, B is strictly inferior to A, or A is always better than B. Another option, um, that's also a way how we can express magnitude of preferences, we can use this symbol. If this symbol is used, this uh, arrow with uh, additional line, we can say that um, A is weakly preferred to B, or B is weakly inferior to A. A is better than uh, or equally good as B, and so on. Other symbols that can be found in literature uh, involves those. A tilde B. If tilde is used, we can uh, express then, in this case, A and B are equally good. Uh, or we can use A equals B, it's just the same. A is uh, just as good as B. What is important to say is that attributes of preferences can be a few. 
First of all, preferences are always subjective. They represent personal tastes. It means that people can have completely different preferences. So uh, you can say that uh, yeah, if uh, a person prefers A over B, that you can dis use this symbol. What is uh, also important is that preferences cannot be measured directly. We can observe preferences in the way that people choose. So uh, if a specific person chose uh, option B over uh, A, then we can say that B is more preferred than, uh, than A. Also, another way to measure preferences, uh, estimate preferences, is to ask people. Then we can call them as self-reported preferences. And finally, preferences change over time. We could, of course, describe this relationship between preferences as time more formally. So as you see here on my screen, that typically the preferences uh, can be a function of time. In this case, uh, in this symbol, A, R, O, K, T, B, Kerr indicates a uh, person and time, it's a point in time. We can also simplify that and always use uh, A, R, O, B. Those are the basic stuff. But also, when we consider decision-making in a consumer con context, we also need to take into account specific motives that drives people's behavior. We can take into account that purchase motivation can be a result of uh, specific types of motivations or drives. So consumers can make their decisions, apply their specific preferences, depending on dominant end goal, so as the table suggests. In the textbook, you can find this table that describes five different dominant end goals. Let's go through them briefly at this point. One end goal can be to optimize satisfaction. So a consumer can decide to buy or apply specific preferences if he or she wants to optimize satisfaction. So it means that, for instance, if you have money, you can buy the most expensive car for uh, to increase your uh, satisfaction. You wouldn't risk to buy maybe used one, probably you will go for a new one. Another dominant goal is prevention. So in this case, uh, when a consumer makes a decision, maybe preferences can lead to prevention can lead to avoiding a specific uh, consequences of um, decision. So a consumer can buy products in order to avoid negative consequences. So uh, protect himself, uh, family, whatsoever. Third end goal is related to resolving a conflict. So a consumer can make a decision in order to balance between positive and negative consequences of specific actions. So for instance, you want to have a car, but uh, you don't want to have a cheap car because you know if you buy a cheap car, then probably you will uh, not be able to move from uh, point A or to point B without problems. So then maybe you would need to borrow some money from your parents or from your friends in order to buy a car that maybe um, can be highly reliable in order to avoid negative consequences of uh, having a car that needs uh, to be fixed um, every now and then. Another uh, dominant goal is uh, to escape. So for instance, uh, some people can uh, decide to uh, choose specific option in order to avoid uh, uh, experience negative consequences. So uh, uh, 
consumers buy things uh, because they think that uh, like perfumes that help them uh, maybe to reduce some aspects um, of their body that smell of course and final goal is to uh, satisfy in this case um, basically a consumer can decide to choose one of the options that satisfy um, their basic needs to a minimum level so for instance if you just want to uh, satisfy uh, your need to uh, to, uh, to eat then you can either decide to buy a, a fancy meal in a fancy restaurant or you can just go to a local shop and buy some bread and that's it that can also happen let's move on to an example that can describe not only the application of preferences but also specific strategy so let's assume that uh, you are going to uh, choose between different types of holidays you can go to Mallorca you can go to uh, another part uh, of Spain you can go to Florida Greece or you can go to France at this moment going to Spain in some countries it's not uh, allowed but let's consider that we are uh, not living in pandemic times and we can uh, freely uh, fly around the world in this case uh, one of the uh, um, criteria of uh, selecting uh, the best option would be uh, first of all let's cut off the time uh, less than three hours so if you fly from Europe probably you wouldn't go to Florida so you will just uh, uh, leave this option out then you look at your wallet and you think okay how much money I can spend on these holidays then you think okay uh, maybe something uh, something between 1500 and 2500 would be fine and then final decision rule something for small children if for example you would say that yeah you would go to Mallorca let's check whether they offer something that is appropriate for children if that would be the case probably you would go there and finally let's focus on those factors that seem to be the one of the most important aspects that pre uh, affect preferences let's focus on brands if you uh, read textbook probably you've noticed that brands um, play a really important role when uh, thinking about what affects consumer preferences yeah that's really the case because brands are everywhere consumers they talk about brands some of uh, consumers they uh, truly believe that brands express themselves and so on if you buy a computer if you buy a car typically uh, if you do not know nothing about cars or if you do not know nothing about computers uh, probably you would focus on one or two specific brands that can happen you can ask your colleague okay what kind of brand would you recommend because we know that brands labels uh, they can mean something they can lead uh, to more or less sensible decision if you can spend five thousand dollars on a computer you can choose between many different options but if you can spend only 500 then probably you will not focus on expensive brands in the textbook they indicate different types of consumers and uh, this descriptions these categories they indicate to what extent being loyal to a brand may affect preferences when deciding between different options so they distinguish between those four types of um, people that uh, in relationship to uh, brands taking into account involvement so on the right hand side you have high involvement on the left hand side 
you have low involvement. So those people who don't care too much about brands are called brand switchers. Those people who uh, may take into account brand are called information seekers. Those people who are just um, focus on brands, uh, sometimes they, they may switch, sometimes uh, not, depending on type of the product. On the other hand, we have brand loyalists, those people who are highly involved with a brand, and then those um, feelings they have for brands may strongly influence preferences, and of course, thus, uh, choices they make. This table introduces specific descriptions of those people. Let's think a little, uh, a little bit for a brief uh, time uh, about ourselves. To what extent we are really loyal to brands? If you are sitting uh, at a desk, just look around and see what kind of brands surround you. Maybe it's a computer brand, maybe it's a phone brand, maybe uh, it's a clothes brand. What kind of clothes? You wear on. Is it uh, really brand uh, clothes or maybe it doesn't matter for you what kind of brand do you buy? What type you are? Are you a brand loyalist? Uh, always you have products of the same brands all the time or maybe you switch. And finally in week one we are going to analyze this case study. We are going to try to apply our knowledge about brands, about preferences, decision-making, in order to understand uh, what triggers consumers, what kind of aspect um, attract them to specific uh, brands or products. When analyzing the case study, try to think about following questions. How was the need for the product activated? Was it the relevance of the information search process to Under Armour. How does involvement figure in the promotional process of the product? Why would someone recommend Under Armour to a friend? Why, and finally, why is the brand name important? See you soon in the Zoom meeting.